Hi, this is Carowinds. Um, today I'm going to teach a craft on how to do a cover for your charging cords. So your question may be, well, why would I want to do that? Uh, part of the reason why you might want to cover your charging cords is to help protect the cord itself. Um, some for fraying on the inside, you know, so uh, you have to replace your charge cords more often. This should help protect it, at least some. Um, so here's one that I've done and here's another. So they're both actually the same, believe it or not. It's just this one's done with two different colored yarns at the same time. And this is done with one yarn at, the, at a time. Um, so choice is yours. You could stay with one continuous yarn color choice throughout. This one I did two different color yarns, just one at a time. This one's two different colored yarns, but I worked them at the same time. So that being said, I'm going to go over what your supply list that you're going to need to do this particular craft. And I will be doing this particular be working two colors um, firstly because it's the exact same and secondly because if I do it with two colors you'll be able to um, look and tell the difference as I'm working this project All right. so what all do you need to work this project well I would have to say the first thing that you're going to need is a charging cord of course Second, um, you're going to need some really good sturdy tape. Thirdly is a pair of scissors. Um, fourth, a good needle. I would recommend a small yarn needle. Where's my camera? There it is. Okay. Small yarn cam uh, needle. Um, regular gift wrapping tape. Oh, here. Okay. Gift wrapping tape. And last but not least, some yarn. So I have yarn and I picked out two different colors. There you go. So that is all that you're going to need for this particular, well, you might want a measurer, but it's up to you. Okay. You don't have to have a measurer, but it can be helpful. Okay, so I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way. So take your sturdy tape, which is, this is my sturdy tape, and you want to tape down your charging cord. So I already had a piece of tape right here, and I'm just going to take it and put it over this and just tape it to my table, desk table desk. So your next question is the next thing you're going to need to do is cut your yarn for your project. So the first question you should be asking yourself is which yarn should I use and how much yarn am I going to need? That's a great question. Um, it depends on the length of your charging cord. This one is six feet long. Um, this one that I did was only three feet long. I would have to say, altogether, yarn wise, I think I used, this is an approximation, approximately between 300 and 350 inches of yarn to do a three foot. So, with that estimation in mind, I would say if you're doing a six foot, piece of cord that you would need at least I'd see 800 inches of yarn okay so and this is the, a great like use up your scrap yarn as long as you know you're gonna like be able to tell that hey that's my charge cord especially like if you're in public um, if you're using a public charging station Somebody's not going to walk off with your cord because it's so obvious that's your cord. Alright, so um, 
So how long to cut your yarn for? So I have it actually written down on here for you. Let me move it. There you go. So how to cut your yarn and what type of yarn to use. So I recommend using your medium size four yarn, which is your typical everyday yarn. Um, if you don't know how to tell what size yarn you're using on every skein of yarn, there is a label. And here is this skein of yarn's label. And there'll be an emblem for a uh, yarn and there'll be a number within that um, emblem for yarn and this one says four so this is a size four medium like size five is considered a bulky six super bulky get the idea okay so there you go so i recommend using size four yarn i'm just using regular acrylic now to cut your yarn for you to do this craft if you're using a single yarn, like a single color, then I would recommend cutting your yarn somewhere between 60 inches to 72 inches. Um, how you could do that is you could go from your fingertip, your fingertip to your shoulder twice and then cut. And that would be approximately 60 inches. But again, if you're a stickler for detail, I would use your trusty tape, measuring tape. Um, I would not recommend going over 72 inches because that's just too long and just too much yarn to deal with. But if you've decided you wanted to go two different colors of yarn, you're going to actually do the half. So you're going to do your cut for your yarn is going to be between 30 inches and 36 inches. Okay. So again, I have decided to do with two different colors. The reason why I'm doing two different colors is you, that way you as the audience can look and tell when I'm doing left and when I'm doing right. That being said, here's my yarn, two different colors. So I want to tie these two different yarns together. So I'm putting the ends like that. I'm going to start off with a magic circle. Um, what is this? <laughs> I'm praying just one play. Um, a magic knot. So I'm going to take one end of my yarn and just start off and just like I am tying a shoe. Just do a tie. Okay tied tied the sorry tied the dark purple to the light to the lavender now I'm going to take the end of the lavender crap I'm going to take the end of the lavender and tie it to the purple like I'm tying a shoe okay and then just pull Pull tight and pull both. In. Make sure you pull each in separately. If you want to make this to be super tight, now trim your ends close as you can get it. And there you go. You have a magic knot, which is the best way to do a color change with yarn. So I just ran my yarn under my cord and just like if I was going to tie my shoe, start a tie on my shoe, here we go. Okay, so just tie this in, Oop. I must be shedding, okay, there we go. So. I have now have a tie around my cord. Awesome. Next thing you want to do is push your tie close up as you can and tighten it. So now we're actually going to start. I have a left, excuse me, I have a left side and I have a right side. 
most important thing to, to remember is you're going to start with your left yarn. Your left yarn, you're going to put it parallel to your cord. Next thing you're going to do is you can take your right yarn and make a loop with it. And the loop is going to go under your charger cable. There's my loop. It's going under the charger cable, but over the top of the left yarn. So there we go. Next up is you're going to put your fingers through the loop. Hello. And then you're going to grab the end of the left yarn, pull it through your loop. And then you're just going to pull the ends of your yarn straight up, tighten it, push it up. Okay. And there you go. Start with your left yarn parallel to your charge cord. Your right yarn, you make a loop, goes under your charging cable and over your left yarn. Next, you reach up, reach up through the loop, grab your left tail end of your yarn, pull it through your loop, grab both tail ends of your yarn, pull at the same time all the way up, tighten, you're done. This is not that difficult, I promise. Next up, you're starting again. Your left yarn is parallel to your cord. Your right yarn, you're making a loop with the tail going under the charging cord and over the left yarn. Next up, you bring your fingers up under and through the loop. Reach over, grab the tail end of your left yarn, pull through your loop. Grab both tail ends of your yarn, pull with both all the way up, tighten. There you go. Left yarn parallel to the cord, right yarn make a loop that loops under your charging cord and over the top of your left yarn. Reach your fingers up through the loop, reach over, grab your left yarn, the end of your left yarn, pull it through the loop both tail ends of the yarn, pull both at the same time, pull up and tighten, and there you go. I'm going to pause this and just continue on just doing the exact same thing over and over and over again until I get towards the end of these pieces of yarn, these 30 inches pieces, okay? So just continue on and um, pause your video until you do the same until you get towards the end of this yarn and I'll show you what to do next All right. okay so I'm back I um, worked all the way from I don't know if you can tell from there all the way down to here and my uh, the ends of my yarn are starting to get short to work with so loop through that's getting difficult tight all right so this is where your tape is going to come in handy the regular gift wrapping tape so let's take a small piece that's plenty enough bring your oh did not want to come now did it Run your yarn down your cord. Just pull it down, and you're going to tape the yarn to the cord. Now, why are you going to do that? The reason why is because you want to. Um, you're going to get some new yarn, and you're actually going to do knots over the top of this, so you're not. You're going to do this over the top of these yarn ends to hide them and they'll be snug against the cord. That way you're not knotting them and then making another knot in your cord that is not consistent with these knots. Because you're already going to have to do that. Okay. Alright. So um, get some more of your cut yarn. 
however you are doing that. Again, um, because I'm sitting here and I'm doing the two yarn method, I'm going to show you again how to do a magic knot, just in case you don't know how. So it's another example of it. I'm going to take my, I've got the ends, okay, there's the ends. I'm going to take my dark purple and I'm just going to, like I'm tying my shoe around the lavender. Yep. So, next step, I'm going to then tie the lavender around the dark purple. You see that? So, I've tied the dark purple to the lavender, and now I've tied the lavender to the dark purple. Now that I've done that, I'm just going to pull the two. They're going to slide. Pull tight. Um, make sure you pull the ends. Ends. Looks good. And then just trim these off as close as you can. Yay! So just like when you started up here, you're going to take your yarn and pass it under the cord. And again, um, if you're working one single piece of yarn, just make sure that wherever you start is in the middle of your the length of your yarn. We know this is the middle of our length of our yarn because we had to tie them together. Okay, so I'm right here. I'm going to get as close as I possibly can to the last knot that I did, the loop knot. And just like how I started up at the top. Yeah. Just how I started up at the top. Um, just like I'm tying my shoe. And again, I must be shedding my hair. I don't know why. Okay. And then just tighten. If you're using two different colors of yarn, I would try to get the knot in the back that you made. And there you go. Simple, easy peasy. Next, you're just going to continue with the knots that you've done previously. It's just when you pull up, there's just gonna you're going to be pulling up over these yarns, so you're going to be a little bit more careful. So I'm going to show you exactly the same. Have your left next to your cord. Have your right. Make a loop. It goes under the cord, but on top of the yellow, um, top of the left yarn. Put your fingers up through the loop. Grab the left yarn end. Pull through the loop. Now this is where you need to be careful. You're then going to pull both ends of the yarn. And don't tighten until you get right up there to your knot. Okay? Because you don't want to pull those. All right. So again, left is next to your cord. Right, you make a loop with your yarn going under the cord but over the left yarn. Put your fingers up through the loop. Grab the left yarn. Pull through the loop. Pull both ends loosely, 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 then tight. Okay. And then just continue to do this. Whoops. It grabbed my tape. Just continue the same process. Not as tight, not as tight, then tight. Okay. If you have to, pull on the yarn that you're covering just to make sure. And it is going to cause a little bit of difference in, in your cord. The reason why is because you have the added bulk of the ends of these yarns under your knots. 
so it's just going to bulk up. It's going to be a, a fatter on um, your cover is going to be fatter on the cord where you cover up the ends of your yarn. Okay, so just continuing the same process, and I've only done let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, four is enough, but I'm just consistent. Normally, I just always count to ten. Next up, you want to trim the yarn that you have been, um, the ends of the yarn. Just want to trim those off. So get as close as you can, but do not cut your long piece. Do not cut your long pieces. These are just the tail ends. So you just cut them. They're now cut. And now you've got that piece of tape around your cord. You want to be extremely careful here, people. This is why you don't do this while the cord is plugged up also. Okay, so you cut the tape around the yarn. And the cord at the yarn, not at the cord, at the yarn. Just to double check that you're not accidentally going to cut the cord. Okay, this is to be careful. You see, so when I cut this tape, I cut between the two pieces of yarn. So no chance of me actually cutting the cord. Where did that come from? Where did that come from? I don't know. Oh, that's got to be from my magic knot. So, obviously, I didn't cut my magic knot close enough. So, I was like, where is that coming from? Alright, so now I'm just going to continue with my knot. Just continue, 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 continue. Do the same thing again, like if when I run out of, um, when I get short on my yarn, I'll just do that again okay so I am going to come back when I'm at the very end of this six foot cord I'll say that again when I'm at the end of the six foot cord <laughs> okay um, but I will I'd like to stop right here and give you a word of advice here's my word of advice If you sit down and you're working on these cords, this is all great. I highly recommend you do this for visualization, for protection. But if you wind up like, oh, just go in with the flow and you wind up choosing to do two cords exactly alike, make sure that they both are the same type of charging cord. So both of these are the, what do you call these, the USB C's? I do know both of these charging cords are both used on the same. They're both exactly. You see that? I don't know. Can you see that? They're both exactly alike. So, my other charging cord that I have that's different is a different cord, different type. It's the one that loops all the way around. So, don't accidentally. Do the same pattern, same um, yarns, uh, and it'd be two different type of charging cords. That would not be good. That would run you crazy. That would defeat the purpose, one of the purposes of why you're doing this. Okay? So, when I finish both these cords that have this design on it, um, both of these work on the same products. I mean, on this, yeah, on the same products. 
So both of these will work on my Kindle um, Fire tablet, and both of these will work on my insulin pump, and both of them will work on my um, headphones. So yay. Okay. So that being said, I'm going to then pause the video, and when I get to the very end of this cord, yeah, six foot. When I get down here to the very end, I'm just going to keep on going until I get to here, and I'll probably start the video back when I'm right, right here, and I'll show you what to do at the very end to finish off this project. All right. 